Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you how to do the brushless conversion on your Losi Mini B or T. This conversion is very simple and all you need is an assortment of metric wrenches, a external receiver, your brushless system, and then a motor mount plate. For this build, I opted to go with the Hobby Wing Easy Run series. Now this is going to fit perfectly into our Losi Mini T. You can also get the Spectrum system or the Castle system. I've heard very good things, but this is probably the most popular one that is out there right now. It is only $50. And this is the one that I see a lot of other people running at the hobby shop and at the track. To get started, I'm gonna disassemble a majority of the stock electronics using a 1.5 millimeter wrench. Now that our system is off, I am going to still be utilizing this over the battery tray right here. So I'm going to very carefully apply pressure to the ESC and the tray itself and remove that double sided tape. Okay, so in the box, you are going to receive a program card, your brushless motor, and then also your brushless ESC. And before we fit our new electronics inside, I am gonna be placing on a new motor mount bracket so you can use your provided T-hex that came with your low C mini B or T and remove the slipper clutch nylon lock nut right there. And then also use your 1.5 millimeter wrench in order to take these remaining screws out. Although I didn't show it on camera, your backside of the super clutch plate is going to be held on by using a standard wheel pin right here. All I did was apply a little bit of force to the backside using a flathead screwdriver. You don't want to use too much force as you can bend and crack this, so just be careful when doing so. Now I will be using the Hot Racing motor mount plate. It is a very simple install. All you need to do is just reverse the process for what you did for taking off the stock motor mount plate. Okay, next let's go ahead and reinstall our slipper clutch, making sure that we do the correct direction. The backside of the super clutch with the square head, that's gonna be facing out towards us, so that way the inside with the little slot goes right back on towards the pin. One thing to note that when you are reinstalling your nylon lock nut onto your spring on the slipper clutch is that you don't wanna make sure that it's too tight or too loose. Now this is something you can play around with when running in your vehicle, but putting it back to the factory length as to what you uninstalled it at, it's typically a good starting point. Taking a look at the actual motor itself, you're gonna notice that we have six different screw hole locations that we can utilize. For this motor mount itself, we're gonna be using the two that are the furthest apart from each other. So that'll be here and here. When mounting them into the actual motor mount itself, we can see that when the two that are furthest apart are flush up against the actual mount, in the top corner, you're gonna notice that we're gonna have the furthest one on the right side here and the furthest one on the bottom left side right there. With our motor now installed onto our motor mount plate, it is a very good idea to leave these two screws loose but still tight enough to hold the motor to it. That way, when we go ahead and put back on our pinion gear, we can accurately set the mesh. Now, setting the mesh on an RC car with your pinion and spur gear is probably one of the most difficult things that I can think of 
doing if you are a beginner. The best way I can describe it is that if you were to take your fingers and lock them all the way into each other, this is what a tight mesh is. There's little to no movement. You're gonna get a lot of binding and a lot of grinding on your gears and it's gonna wear them down very quickly. Now, if you were to move those fingers apart to right here, as you can see, there's a lot of room, a lot of slop, and then they can move away quite easily. Where you wanna be is right somewhere in between to where you have the perfect engagement to where you're not too tight and also where you're not too loose. Next, I am going to reinstall my over the battery mount tray so that way I can house my ESC. And then final steps, we are going to mount our ESC and then hook up all the wiring. Now it is very important that when you go to hook up your leads to your ESC and your motor is that you connect the correct colors to the correct leads. Okay, I went ahead and nestled in all the wires and made sure everything was connected properly. I went ahead and zip tied some things to make sure that it is A-OK. -okay. Make sure that they do not touch or go near your gears right here so that way you don't snag anything and anything catches on fire. Next thing what we need to do is we need to hook up our receiver right here. Now there's not much room left, but there is a tiny amount to where if you were to stick it right on top of the servo, it should be in and out of the way so that way it doesn't interfere with the actual steering of the servo saver right there. Okay, now with the receiver um, nestled in there, I am going to connect my ESC to the throttle position right here, and then also my servo to my steering position right here. I'm gonna clean up the wires and I'll get back with you. All right, now we can go ahead and plug in our battery and get this bound up to your uh, transmitter right here. All right, now if everything is set up correctly, you should be able to run your system, no problems at all. I'm gonna go ahead and throw back on my gear cover, but just to give it a quick test. Definitely has a lot more power now. You can actually see the rear uh, tires actually starting to balloon, so that's how you know you got a pretty good decent amount of power right there. Okay, after going out and doing some tests, I did realize that my uh, nylon lock nut for my slipper clutch was on a little bit too loose. Basically, we set it on the ground. Um, the gears turn, but the actual wheels do not turn, so I had to tighten that up a little bit. Um, I also had to uh, adjust some endpoints for my steering. Other than that, it's good to go. All right, guys, so that's actually going to do it for today's video. I'm actually filming this on another day. But stick around for the next video because I'll be throwing on some upgrades for this vehicle, including some carpet tires, some hot racing shocks, and a couple other key components for when you take it racing. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.